Hi everyone. I did three seahorse sea glass projects and I did this with tumbled glass, so it's faux sea glass. I did one without resin, one with resin, and one on cardstock paper. If you want to learn how to do this, follow along. Let's get started. To start this project, you need to Google free clip art seahorse. Choose the one you want, copy it, and then paste it into your favorite program, whether it's Microsoft Office, Pages, whatever you use. Then you need to print out two if you're gonna be using it for project two or three. You need one to set on the table and one to tape behind the glass. DIY white chalk paint is what I'm using for the frame. And in order to do this project, I need to remove the backing, the mat, and the glass from the frame to paint it. I'm also going to be painting the mat with a green DIY paint, chalk paint. To do this first project, you need a raised mat one that leaves a space between the mat and the base at least a quarter of an inch. And you can see how that is raised up. And you have to have that for the sea glass to fit behind it. Otherwise, it won't work. For this project, I use DIY brand chalk paint on both the plastic mat and the frame. I really don't have a preference for a specific brand of chalk paint. It just happened that I had this brand on hand. I do usually use chalk paint for wood projects just because it tends to be more forgiving and only needs one or two coats. That being said, for this project, I ended up using three coats before I was satisfied. I sanded the frame to give it a distressed look. I like the lightly distressed look in general, especially for coastal theme projects. I really like the way it turned out. Once your frame's prepared, you need to measure the inside of the frame for the cardstock paper and then cut the cardstock paper to fit. Then you're pretty much ready to begin. Get your glass out and start setting it on your template. Set it up just the way you want it. I ended up changing it a couple of times. And then when you're done with that, you're ready to move it over to the paper. Move it over to the paper. And after you have it set just how you like it, I use Elmer's glue to attach each individual piece. The Elmer's glue will set in 24 hours and you're ready to put it in the frame. In this project, I used a small piece of jewelry for the eye and five small beads for the bubbles. This is the finished faux sea glass seahorse on cardstock. For this project, to prepare the frame, I took the glass out and used quick seal adhesive caulk around the perimeter of the frame where the glass was gonna sit. This caulk is clear, but it comes out white and dries clear after 24 hours. After I went around the perimeter, I smoothed it down, put the glass back in and let it dry. And there's no need to worry if some of the caulk gets on the glass. Once it's dry, you can just take a razor and scrape it right off. No problem. So this is my second seahorse project. This one I actually did about a year and a half ago um, after I had started tumbling glass, but I had not yet started using resin. So this I did much like my first project where I had the template on the table and also taped behind the glass and I set it all up first and then um, when I was ready to glue it on I moved them piece by piece over and I used this um, quick seal caulk and it's clear it comes out white but it dries clear the only um, con about this is that when you put this up against a window you can see the little bit of the glue behind each piece. Whereas if you have it up against the wall, you don't know the difference. 
but that's the only real difference between the resin seahorse and this one, I think. This is the finished faux sea glass seahorse on glass. Normally, whenever I prepare a frame for resin, I take the back off, which of course we're not gonna be using. I take the glass out. I clean it really well. Then I use this uh, quick seal. It's clear silicone um, adhesive caulk. And what I do is I go all the way around the edge. It comes out white. I don't know if you can see it or not. It comes out white, but dries clear. And then I'll usually just kind of make sure it's spread out. And if it gets onto the glass, it's not that big of a deal. You can just take a razor and clear it off. Glass. Put it on. Push it down into it and let it dry for 24 hours. After the glass has dried for 24 hours, I clean it up with a razor or front and back on the glass if any of the uh, caulk has gotten on there. And then I flip it over and put painter's tape all around the perimeter. And this will help prevent any leaks just in case any spots were missed. So with our last seahorse example, we're using resin. And I've been using this um, Total Boat epoxy resin and it comes in two parts it's um, half gallon and a half gallon to equal a whole gallon if you're using it um, by volume it's one half to one half if you're using it by weight it's one to point eight three and i usually weigh it i don't know why but i do when you're done measuring out your resin you need to mix it for two to three minutes be sure to scrape the sides and the bottom. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. When you're done mixing, you're ready to pour it on the glass. You pour it. You should kind of pour it toward the edges because you have to make sure it fills in all the edges. And this really should be plenty. Make sure you get it in all the edges. I had to get my glasses because um, <laughs> last time I didn't have my glasses on and I didn't get into all the edges. But the good news is if you don't get into all the edges and it dries completely, you can mix up a new batch, just a small amount of resin that you need for the corner or wherever you missed and just dump it over it and it'll look, look fine. The other thing when you're working with resin, you always need to have rubbing alcohol around because um, it'll pretty much clean anything up. If you get it onto the frame or if you get it on your hands or if you get it in your hair like I did one time, but you have to do it before it dries. So after you finish, you know, smoothing out the resin, you should use it. Now, some resins are thinner than other resins and they will just level out and go all the way to the side. This resin seems to be thicker. I'm not sure why, but you really have to spread it out. And it's not that hard to do. Put your glasses on so you can see. So now you can see that the resin has quite a few bubbles and we're gonna use the heat gun to get the bubbles out. The heat gun has two settings, this particular one low and high, and that puts out the amount of pressure. I always just put it to low. And then on the back of the heat gun, it has the temperature settings and I always set it between four and 500 degrees. 
be careful not to hold it too close to the resin so that it doesn't blow the resin up over the edges of the frame. It is gonna take up to five minutes to get the bubbles out, maybe even longer. Now you're ready to start moving the glass over to the resin. If the resin is real thick, you might need a toothpick to kind of move the pieces of glass around so that you don't get it on your fingers. And again, with this seahorse, I used three little beads for bubbles and I used a piece of jewelry to make an eye. When you're done, let it set overnight in a room that's between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit on a flat surface. Be sure to take the paper off the back of your glass when you're done. This is the finished faux sea glass seahorse on resin. So I had said earlier that I would show you the difference between the sea glass on glass and the sea glass on resin on glass. And if you look at these uh, up against my sliding glass door, the sea glass on resin is totally clear and translucent and the sea glass on glass that I had to use the quick seal adhesive caulk, you can actually see the glue behind it. So it looks great when you have it up against the wall. It's just if you want to hang it in a window, you can really notice the difference.